it that time already? Oh my goodness. Okay, check, checking. Hello. Hi, welcome to Stages of Life Radio. It's Melissa Fox along with our favorite Dr. David Klein from Stages of Life Medical Institute. And Doc, how are you doing today? I'm feeling pretty just excellent, actually. Nice Ish. rainy day. How could I feel any worse? Really? <laughs> no, well, actually, I feel good. Actually, on a rainy day, um, isn't that usually of issue to some people, aches and pains and such? Well, it kind of is. Okay, for a lot of folks with things like fibromyalgia, allergies, sinus issues, rainy days can be misery. But, okay, today I feel particularly good, and I'm not entirely sure why. I'm evaluating a, a new product. and Actually, it's not such a new product. It's new to me. And it's for the allergy and sinus issues. And so before I go ahead and, and endorse things or before I go ahead and promote them or whatever it is happens to be, I like to try them. You know, if it works on me, works for me, then I'll go ahead and talk about it. If not, eh, I don't really care. I'm not going to do it. And so this one has to do with a, a protein called, uh, that is derived from quail eggs. Of all things, quail eggs. Go figure this one out. So, you know, I used to think that I knew a lot about sinuses. I used to think I knew a lot about allergies. I used to think that just because I suffer from these things that I really knew even more. But the fact of the matter is, is that you don't. Each person is different. You know, we're all the same that way. You know, we're all the same. We're all different we're all the different. same. <laughs> we're all the same, yeah. but different. But that's, our, that's our similarities. Okay, fair we're enough. all different. All right. And so you try to apply your way through life by looking for those little tricks and triggers that may differentiate ourselves. But today's talk is on something that is of universal concern, and these are things that are universally true. Rarely in medicine, rarely in life, rarely in the universe do you find things that are true for everybody, and these things are. So what are we talking about? <clears throat> We're gonna be talking about minerals, the magic of minerals. And what is so magical about these minerals? Well, for starters, we're going to discuss what is a mineral with regards to and as it pertains to health, physiology, medicine, pharmacology. And a mineral, okay, is an inorganic substance, an atom. It could be, you know, a binary atom, okay? It could be a metal and a cation. I mean, it could be a number of different structures, moieties. But what they have in common is this is that they're inorganic and there's something called enzyme cofactors. So we all think we understand what enzymes are all about. Yeah, you need them to digest. You need them this, you need them to that. What an enzyme is, it's an organic catalyst. Just like the catalytic converter in your car, these chemicals, these proteins, turn chemical A into chemical B. That's what they do. That's how your body makes this from that. You know, if you go ahead and you eat a hamburger, it turns into your muscle, not cow muscle. If you eat a hamburger, it turns into skin, connective tissue. If you eat a hamburger, it turns into eyeballs. It turns into a lot of different things because it's broken that down. That's kind of gross. It is kind of <laughs> gross, actually. Well, it was meant to be. Okay, fair enough. But what happens, okay, is your body constructs itself. It reconstructs itself uh, very rapidly. There's a tremendous cellular turnover from simple materials. So it takes a complex thing called food, breaks it down into smaller structures, and then reassembles it, very much like a box of Legos. You end up with a Lego structure, Junior takes care of it, breaks it all into pieces, and then makes something else of it. All the parts are interchangeable, and yet they're not. If you need a yellow brick or a red brick, they're not interchangeable. If you need a square one or octagonal, they're not, they're, 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 they work the same way, but they really don't. And minerals act in a particular way to proteins to turn them from one thing to something else. So the way I like to explain it to my patients is that these proteins that we, that we are, use structurally, we use as enzymes, that we use as connective tissues, start off as a string, as a, as a, as a small string of amino acids, sometimes singular, sometimes uh, uh, in doubles and triples and whatnot, but then they're knitted into much longer uh, you know, structures, these protein structures, very, very long string. So it's like a ball of string or a ball of yarn. Now, how do you turn a ball of yarn into a garment? That doesn't happen by itself. You must weave it. I actually know how to knit. Yes, okay, but when you did knit, and we'll mm -hmm. get to that in a second, do you knit a sweater from one uh, with, you know, without breaking it into pieces? And the answer is no, you mm -hmm. don't. No, so what happens is, is that these uh, atoms you know, that we're going to call minerals here act to pleat the... Uh, you know, that, that string 
the very much the same way that you knit things. So if you go ahead and you produce this string, it's going to form secondary protein structure without you doing anything. So it goes, this not long uh, string. And then you leave it alone, and it'll start folding on itself like an accordion until it finds a particular shape. But it doesn't do very much. It's like a, like a jellyfish. It, it doesn't go anywhere. What these minerals do is they tack it together very much the way a stapler would, okay, to a piece of, of paper, mm. or the way you would knit it together with a knitting needle or a crochet hook or a buttonhole or whatever it happens to be. So what these things do is they hold the protein together through what are called covalent bonds. It will take one portion of the structure from a, to a distant one and tie the two things together and start knitting it. So then you end up with a, with a secondary protein structure. Now you end up with, oh, I don't know, that ball of yarn now turned into a panel, which is going to be the back of your sweater. Or it might be a sleeve, or it might be a cuff, or it might be a collar. Then another set of enzymes or minerals, in this case it could be, or a vitamin, which is, which is going to act very similarly, will then attach these different pieces together to form your garment. That is how it's done. And each of these pieces, are they're different. So you can look at calcium and you can look at magnesium. Now, chemically, they're extraordinarily similar. Calcium oxide, calcium, magnesium oxide, you, you, they, chemically, they're almost interchangeable for most things. But in terms of enzyme structure, they're not. Now, why not? This is where it gets to be fun. If you ask the average doctor, why does magnesium act differently than calcium with regards to enzyme structure? It has to do with the size of the atom. Now, I want you to imagine that you have a... Um, what the Chinese checkerboard is a good example. Chinese checkerboard, you have marbles, and you have little dips all over the marbles, uh, all over the board. And those marbles fit into that board. Yes, they do. Now, I want you to imagine now that you have a marble of a larger size. Is it going to fit in that board? And the answer is negatory, Batman. The small ones will get in there, but the big ones will not. If you have BBs, okay, you'll roll them in there, and they will prevent the, the marbles that you do need to put in from entering those holes. Now, that is a very interesting metaphor because that's how poisons work. Poisons work by getting into those spots and preventing the uh, minerals that you're looking at from actually going to where they need to go. Now, there are other types of poisons, but this is one that will damage the way that proteins are assembled. It's kind of neat, actually. So when you're looking at mineral uh, needs, they're magical. Because nobody really understands exactly, you know, how they work or what they do, except that we fully appreciate when they do work. So it's like a rainbow. You know, you know you're going to see a rainbow, but you really don't know when it's going to occur. You don't know where to stand necessarily. It's either going to happen or it won't happen, depending upon on circumstances and positions and postures that you really can't necessarily control. But what I will tell you is that every person listening in right now, every person that has uh, their ears to the set, and those that do not have ears to the set, just the same, need these minerals in exactly the same way, not necessarily in the same amount, but for all of the same reasons. So what we're going to do when we come back, and we've got about 50 seconds to go, we're going to go over the most common of all mineral deficiencies. We're going to go over the ones that you need to pay attention to and why. Why do you need to pay any attention at all to what I'm going to tell you? And the answer is because you, your life depends on it. Cool. We yeah. also have some uh, people that have already texted in some questions. Excellent. You can get yours online as well. Just text 23680. That's our number. And then ask us whatever. And uh, I will just hand it over to Dr. Dave because I am not the expert here, uh, <laughs> which is a good thing. Well, you know, I you're picking you, it up, though. Oh, I, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. The mama didn't raise stupid. <laughs> <laughs> she had hand me off to somebody else. <laughs> somebody else taught you stupid. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And if you want to call in, the lines are open right now, which is surprising. 407. 407- 422-1212. More about the magic minerals with Dr. David Klein. You can check out stagesoflifevitamins.com as well. And we will be right back. You're listening to Stages of Life Radio on News Radio, WFLA, Orlando. Yay! Uh, we are now off. Hi, everybody on the uh, Facebook and Periscope and what have you. TikTok, as long as we haven't. And I, You know, I refuse. I Good. Do I, I, do. I, I don't even know anything I about TikTok. I seriously refuse to do anything with regards to TikTok. 
talk. Uh, let's see, just a bit of fibromyalgia. Yeah, fibromyalgia is an interesting beast. People get really PO'd when I tell them that it's not a disease. It never was a disease. It's a disease. I have fibromyalgia. You don't understand. Yeah, I do. I understand <laughs> that you haven't gone to the right doctor and that you are yeah. taking maybe, you know, an advantage of a situation like chronic. What's the other one? Chronic. Uh, oh, chronic was, fatigue syndrome. Chronic fatigue syndrome, which is the same uh, crap answer as, as fibromyalgia. Exactly. It's a symptom. Uh -huh. More appropriately, it's a symptom complex. Which now, means been, a couple of things going on. Yeah, or it could be, it could, you know, there are causes for these things. Now, if you sit back and look at the history Ooh. of fibromyalgia, and I've been treating patients for this for 42 years. I remember before the American College of Rheumatology acknowledged that it existed. Before then, they said, oh, there's no such thing, no such thing. And then one time, I think it's like 1987 or 88, they came out with a statement and said, oh, well, we're experts on it. Therefore, we're going to define it. Uh. Fibromyalgia. Okay, is not a disease and it never was a disease. No. It has a diagnostic code, as do many complaints. Cough, okay, has a J06 code. That doesn't make it a disease. <laughs> it just simply means that it has a code. Uh, so fibromyalgia, okay, is not in fact a disease. Diseases have known causes. Symptoms, complaints do. Now, back in the 18th century, there was a disease that really killed a lot of people that we no longer see. It's called fever. So the doctor would come oh, yeah. in and put his hand on your forehead and go, oh, 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 oh it's fever. You, got the fever. you have fever. And, you know, we have to break the fever and we have to this for the fever. So it wasn't until we, we sorted out as a profession, as a society, as a nation, as a world uh, group, what causes the fever before we are actually able to treat it. Now, fever does, in fact, have a diagnostic code. Wouldn't you know it? But it's not a disease, nor is fibromyalgia. So what is fibromyalgia? Fibromyalgia is pain of fibromuscular, uh, fibromuscular origin with no known cause, which means the doctor can't figure it out. And I have, and I could spend all day, yes. I won't, yes, discussing the different causes of fibromyalgia, but my most favorite one is influenza. Influenza will give you all the same symptoms of, of uh, fibromyalgia. You except mean for the aches fact, and pains? Aches and pains, symmetric <laughs> fibromuscular pains. And if you didn't know about influenza, you wouldn't know what it caused it. Mm -hmm. But adrenal dysfunction, uh, thyroid dysfunction, certain types of, of parasites will do it. Certain types of chronic uh, viral and chronic bacterial illnesses will do it. And wouldn't you know it, m mineral deficiencies will do it. And that's something we're going to get into. Yeah, so 45 if, seconds for you to tell me why doctors actually just uh, go ahead and give that catch-all fibromyalgia. Because they don't know what they're doing. And you have to give somebody a label or you can't give them a bill. Oh. It's very, very simple. You come into the doctor's office and That's you give them a, a series code. of complaints. Sure. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, I don't know what's wrong with you. Here's your bill. You know, you don't go back. I mean, truly. Mm -hmm. You know, what good doctor doesn't give you a misdiagnosis anyway? <laughs> All right. That. We are a radio station, so if you're listening on YouTube, we pay the appropriate fees. And, over uh, and over again, as uh -huh, it turns out. A lot, out. yeah. It's yeah, really several it's times. redundant. Yeah. Oh, all right, we're getting ready to come back. Uh, stay on here, guys, for the Facebook feed. <laughs> Welcome back. Hey there. You're listening to Stages of Life Radio. We do this every Sunday afternoon, 4 until 5 p.m. The lines are wide open. 407-422-1212. Dr. David Klein is here with us. This guy's got five board certifications, and every one of them is important. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hashtag, hashtag important guy. Now, you can text us, too. 23680, ask us your questions. We've got several online here. Good. But at the moment, we were discussing minerals, magic minerals. Yes. Yeah, the magic of minerals, and we're going to get in, into something we call magic minerals. Oh. So... You know, first thing we're going to look at is what are the most common of all micronutrient deficiencies, okay? And wouldn't you know that two of them, two of the top three are mineral, okay. magnesium and zinc. So magnesium deficiency, zinc deficiency, and magnesium and zinc are both metals. Wouldn't you know it? Minerals, metals. In context here, what do these two things do? And they pleat, they connect, they staple Proteins, smaller proteins together to form a shape called tertiary protein structure. So what importance does this mean to you? 
It'd be like taking a piece of sheet metal and pounding it into a fender for your car. Taking a piece of sheet metal and pounding it into a desktop or pounding it into a sink. That's what these things do is they take a sheet and they pound it, produce it, staple it, turn it into something that's more useful or in fact useful at all. Mm -hmm. So what's the magic of it? What's interesting is that it doesn't have to be taught to do this. It's very, very interesting. It finds its own shape. So when you, when you have these proteins in the presence of these minerals, they, without a fanfare, nobody has to intervene. They will find each other and start the process. Okay, can you do, me, can you do me a favor? Sure. Can, I'm stu. <laughs> I don't want to be you know, blunt about it, but I, I got lost for a second there. Can you make it like <laughs> um, you know, the old Dick and Jane spot the dog for me, something like that? And okay, well, let's, let's, so, let's take zinc as an example. Okay. okay? You know, number, one mag, number one mineral deficiency in our society is magnesium. But we're going to start with zinc, which okay. is number three. Why zinc? What zinc does in particular, the body uses it for over 150 different enzymatic reactions, which means it takes a certain string of protein mm -hmm. and turn it into a particular enzyme that permits conversion of chemical A into conver uh, chemical B. Real easy. Where do you see zinc being a problem? Okay, because the only thing you really care about, if I asked you what the different chemicals were, your eyes would glaze over, nobody would care, mm -hmm. and you'd be watching some type of sporting event right Sport. now. Sport. Yeah, okay. The sporting events are not going to save your life, but this might. Now, what does zinc do for you? Zinc is an interesting one. The systems in your body, every system in your body needs zinc to function, from your eyeballs to your toenails. That's just the way that it works. But the one that's going to kill you, the one that's going to keep you from, from living, okay, for, for any length of time, is the immune system. Your immune system is probably the single most sensitive system in your body to micronutrient deficiency because of the nature of the proteins that have to be produced, the rapidity with which they need to be reposed, produced, and the variety. So zinc is necessary for you to fight off infections. And if you don't believe that, you know, and, and, and you really don't have to, I want you to consider this. There are products that have been out there for years that say, well, you know, if, if you start coming down uh, with a cold, spray this zinc up your nose and the cold goes away. Or take these zinc tablets under your tongue and you'll feel better. The cold will get better. Well, you know, the joke is, is they're right. It will. Okay. The bigger joke is on you, mm -hmm. which is why in the world would you wait to get sick to take the stuff that you're deficient yeah, in that, to allow your immune system to work at all? Zinc is not a you know, viricide. It doesn't kill viruses. It doesn't kill bacteria. If you take it the wrong way, like spraying it up your nose, as some people did, you'll find that it will do something really, really cool, which is kill your ability to smell. Oh. You know, I mean, some people need that, you know, <laughs> but for the most part, yeah. it's not you know, it's not a good thing. So what do these structures do? Magnesium, number one mineral deficiency. Over 350 different enzymatic reactions will go south in the absence of adequate amounts of magnesium. But do they all go south at the same time? And the answer is no. Okay. Some of the systems are more sensitive to deficiencies than others. So when you're magnesium deficient profoundly, you're going to start seeing muscle cramping. Oh, wouldn't you know, fibromyalgia. Oh. Fibromyalgia is typically caused by a deficiency in magnesium. You'll see the muscle cramping at night. You'll see symmetrical shoulder pain, arm pain, leg pain, and whatnot. And 40% of the population is magnesium uh, deficient. It's okay, 40, so, 40%. So what do we do it's about this magnesium and this zinc? Because um, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know how to like you know put all these potions together. Well, how do how do I get the right amount? What do I do? Well, what you do is you pay attention because I'm not even close to there yet. Okay, don't get me dizzy. <laughs> don't get me dizzy. We got phone calls stacking up. Oh, and we yeah. got well, all we'll kinds of people. We'll, we'll get to them. Okay. So, here's, so okay. here's, what, here's what happens. What minerals are we talking about? Are we talking about just zinc and magnesium? The answer is no. Mm -mm. We're talking about many others. Molybdenum, okay, bone health, boron. Bone health. People have osteoporosis and they don't know why. Don't take enough boron. Don't take enough strontium. You're going you're gonna to develop osteopenia than osteoporosis. These are minerals. These are nothing different. What else do you want to be looking at? Mm -hmm. Okay. Even, even silicon is important to what's going on here. You know, it's something that most doctors don't even know is involved in this type of health, but it is. So how do you go about fixing this? Well, the thing about minerals, the, the, the magic about minerals is that too little you get sick and too much, you can get sick. 
Selenium is a great example of this. Selenium deficiency leads to hypothyroidism. Oh. So we have a question or two on the board already for folks that are interested in hypothyroid. My suggestion to you is listen, care, you know, just listen carefully about this. Because in the treatment of thyroid disease, one of the first things that you want to do is to replace selenium and zinc. Because selenium deficiency, zinc deficiency lead to hypothyroidism. And if you are a horse owner or if you are a veterinarian, you already know this. Because one of the things that you do, especially in the southeast and in the southwest, is you give your horses zinc and selenium to keep them from getting fat. Why? Because fat is one of the symptoms of hypothyroidism, which is very, very common in these sorts of large veterinary creatures. Copper deficiency leads to aneurysm. Think that one over for a second, aneurysm and hernias. So these minerals have to be taken in a particular way. Now we're going to get to treating it. Okay, so what do you do? Okay. So if, you, if, you, if you're concerned about taking them, you do. If you're concerned about taking them safely, then you need to know how much. And if you're concerned about really getting by with this thing, you learn about the ratios that have, they have to be taken in. Because calcium and magnesium have to be taken in the right ratios as well as the right amounts. Zinc and selenium in the right amounts and ratios. If you don't do it any other way, you're going to get sick. Vanadium and chromium, go figure. Those are both minerals. If you don't get enough of it, you become uh, diabetic, wouldn't you know it? Mm -hmm. Nobody else has diabetes out there, right? <laughs> you can treat blood sugar with vanadium, which was the first anti-diabetic medicine ever brought to market, and chromium, which everybody knows, helps you lose weight. How? By lowering blood sugar. So the product that I'm going to talk about, I put together about 20 years ago. We called it Daddy's Magic Minerals. Why would I call it Daddy's Magic Minerals? The answer is simple. My daughter was 10 years old, Aww. okay? And I was doing research in my, in my clinic, looking at the prevention and treatment of thyroid disease and diabetes, and came up with particular amounts of these things that would lower blood sugar. The beauty in my patients is when I ask them, hey, would you like to try something a little different? I have an idea. They, sh they go, sure, mm -hmm. okay? And then we work our way through it. Most doctors do this anyway, and they don't ask you. So when you ask permission, okay, you say, hey, listen, I have an idea. Let's see if we can't fix your problem by A, B, and C. And then when the things start to click, then you run with the football. So at about, no, I guess it was about 1999, 2000, I came up with a combination of zinc, selenium, vanadium, and chromium that not only helped with a thyroid disease, but with diabetes as well. So we came up with this product, Daddy's Magic Minerals. Why? My daughter was 10. I put eight different capsules in front of her to be taken twice a day and wouldn't you know what she didn't like it well who would so no who would and it was expensive it was about 70 bucks a month at that time and that's 20 years ago so i can you know cobbled this thing together so that it had everything in the right amounts in the right ratios and so it, i dropped was able to drop the overall expense of this by about 80 percent so it was about 20 bucks a month and it's been that way for the last 20 years actually okay so we got bill online uh from orlando sure got a question from him coming up the text line's still hot at 23680 if you want to text in your questions and we're also broadcasting on facebook right now just check out stages of life medical institute where we are answering questions during the commercial breaks from radio and we've got a few of those stacked up. Cool. Uh-huh. For more information on Magic Minerals, check out stagesoflifevitamins.com. Stagesoflifevitamins.com. And we'll be right back. Stages of Life Radio on News Radio WFLA Orlando. <laughs> okay, so we got some questions here. <laughs> All right. Uh, Suzanne says, I found a calcium supplement with magnesium, zinc, and D3. Okay. Also take garlic capsules. Need to stay healthy and moving. I'm hitting 60. Does that sound like a good plan for her? Not necessarily. All right, here's the real problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, you mentioned the, the mineral, but not the moiety. There is where people trip on themselves. So what are you looking at? You're looking at magnesium. All oh, marvelous. Is it magnesium oxide, magnesium carbonate? They're both junk. Is it magnesium torate? Great for absorption. Pretty good for the eyes. All, it's okay if, you're, if you have, fi, uh, have fibromyalgia. If you need to sleep at night and you have muscle cramps, magnesium glycinate is the one that you're looking for. Of all others, magnesium gluconate or, or uh, one of the others. So malate. So what we're looking at here is that you need to know the full picture. I need to know the full picture. What does your calcium look like? The best calcium is called calcium hydroxyapatite. 
that is what your body needs for bone, muscle, and whatnot. So you have to look at the bottle and it will tell you, if you're lucky, what is in it. Then you can take it from there. Vitamin D, how much vitamin D? What's it? What's its structure? It's D3, 5,000 I use is what you're looking for, and mm-hmm. you have to take an oil with it to absorb it. Right. Little Otherwise, fishies. it doesn't work. Yeah. So what you've got there is, a, is an interesting product, but it may not be any good for you. And it may be, you may be spending more money than you need to as well. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Karen is one of your patients. She's been going to you for five months now. Cool. And she is... Saying taking all the recommended minerals, great results. Uh, one, she's eating better, doing her cholesterol numbers are great. And more importantly, she feels better physically. Now, she's the one who mentioned her friend with fibromyalgia. Sure. Palm Harbor is where she's at. Is okay. there a counterpart or anyone that you would know of or maybe even a televisit that you might be able to in put Palm together? Harbor? Yeah. I don't know anybody in Palm Harbor I that I would either. trust with a plastic fork. Hey. Okay. But that's, you know, that being said, what I do is kind of unusual. Yes. Okay, there may be a dozen people in the country that do what I do the way I do it. And uh, we have patients that travel in thousands of miles to see me because guess what? You know, Palm Harbor is not that far away. Yeah. So do I do telehealth for this? For the first visit, I think that there are people that they're doing telehealth that are ripping you off. You need to be able to look at somebody, listen to the tonality of their voice. You need to be able to look at their skin. You need to be looking at the way they walk. There's so much that you can't do by telehealth. Mm-hmm. Telehealth is like drive through Wendy's. If you're looking to go out <laughs> to have a really, really good meal, don't expect to get it in a drive through Right. Telehealth is drive through medicine. You get, You don't get what you pay for. You don't, not even close. Do I do telehealth medicine? The answer is only if I already know the patient. They happen to be out of town on vacation or business and I need to reach them. And it's not going to be a complicated matter. Then I will do telehealth. Otherwise, I insist that they fly back. You know, I've uh, complicated people all over the country. And they will fly back. Southwest Airlines, 99 bucks for most places in the country each way. It's not that big a deal. Your health is the way it is. But then again, let's look at your at your hairdresser. I got I have people that will drive 300 miles for their hairdresser, but they resent driving 20 miles for their doctor. It just kills me sometimes. Huh. Now, for nail techs, I understand it. Doctors, I don't get it. Yeah. All right, that started a little early, and then it should have. Actually, looks like WFLA is still next to commercial. There. Support our sponsors, by the way. Pharmacy specialists... Get ready to talk about ED for a second here as it is, and some other stuff. I've so, known those guys for 30 years. Yeah, okay, they're a compounding pharmacy. Mm. I've, I know the people that are down there. There are about four compounding pharmacies in the country that I will use. MakeRx.com. These guys are good, and they're local to most of the people listening in right yep. now. And they'll help out the males and the females. I mean, because if one's working, the other one should too. You, know you would hope so. I would think. You know, let's not get greedy or anything. But. <laughs> All right, stand by. I don't understand. And we are back. Welcome back. It's Stages of Life Radio every Sunday afternoon, 4 to 5. We are a live call-in medical show. Wow. Dr. David Klein is the man. Stagesoflifemedicalinstitute.com. Stages of Life is at the intersection of I-4, State Road 434, just a piano's throw off of the uh, interstate right here in Longwood. Isn't that right? Isn't that what you like to say? It's a piano's throw off of I-4. <laughs> right there. You, you, can, you, can, you can see our office as you... As you pass by on I-4, sometimes it's a crawl, so you get a really good look through oh, the windows. Oh, yeah, yeah, you sure do. <laughs> All right, we have uh, we got some people on the phone. We've got some texts to handle, and we were talking about the magic of minerals. Yes, okay. So magic minerals, I put this together, this concept, because it was easy for me to get my daughter to take it when I call it Daddy's Magic Minerals. Now that she's 30. In fact, I dropped it when she turned 21. I just had magic minerals. Why? Because it was a little bit... Creepy. Yeah, you know how it goes. You know, (laughs) me and Joe Biden, we we, we kind of have the same problems. Mm -hmm. So what is it about these sorts of chelated mineral complexes? And a chelate, people, they all chelated. No, it's chelate, Chelate. C-H-E-L-A-T-E. A A chelate is is uh, an amino acid ester. It's a a, a salt. So you end up with a, a, a mineral with an amino acid attached to it. And why is this important to know? Because your body can't absorb inorganic metal ions. So if you if you suck down, uh, let's say, rust, you're not going to get iron. It has to be in an organic basis. Now, this isn't to be confused with organic eggs and organic meat and organic celery. 
That's for tree huggers. It's all important, okay? Now, there are people out there that really, you know, they don't want the chemicals. I happen to like the extra flavor they add. But when it comes to the minerals, all right, what this does is it allows your body to absorb it. Simple. Okay, and what else? So when you're looking at mineral comp, when you're looking at mineral absorption, mm -hmm. you need to look at what else you're taking. You need to understand that your body is not a static uh, organ. So what can you do as an individual? What can you do mm. to make yourself magnesium what deficient? Could do? What could we do? What could you do to make yourself magnesium deficient? And the answer is very, very simple. Not take away your stomach thing. acid. Oh, okay. okay. So there, are, there, are there any people in the listening audience that take things like Pepsi, Zantac, oh, and whatnot? Bad idea. Uh, yeah. Okay. There are lots of people that do because they have, re, they have regurgitation. They have reflux esophagitis. They have ulcer. They have this. They don't they have eat that. right. Because they're too fat and they that don't too. eat right. Mm -hmm. So what happens is you take away the stomach acid. That acid is necessary for you to absorb vitamin B12 and magnesium. So you will become B12 deficient and magnesium deficient just simply by taking uh, these PPIs and H2 blockers. You can also become mag uh, B12 and magnesium deficient if you've had uh, stomach stapling and whatnot. These, these, these obesity, these bariatric surgeries. So when you can have changes that will make these occur. And it's very, very important for you to uh, let the doctors know that this is a concern. The doctor may not know the relationship, but it's important that you do. You're not, you are tuned into this because your doctor hasn't. So you need to know and you need to bring it up. Just say, Dr. Jones, were you aware of the 886 articles on B12 deficiency associated with, B, uh, with uh, PPIs? Or the fact that kidney failure, kidney failure is associated with the use of these same medications. Wouldn't you know? Okay. You need to know. Because by the time somebody is going to tell you, it is going to be a commercial on TV and you are looking at a problem with a dialysis machine attached to it. That is not the time to be taking action. So what do you want to do? You want to be making the right decisions at the right time so that you don't end up as a statistic. That's the key thing. So in any event, I'm, I'm 66 years old. I feel like I'm 30. Every piece works. My cholesterol is in the 170s. The rest of my chemistries are excellent. My calcium score was zero. Okay, if you're a cardiologist out there, I want to know if your calcium score is zero. I don't take a statin. I never will take a statin. I don't, and I eat a quarter of a pound of cheese a day. So what is it that I'm doing that you're not? Taking One of those things is taking, a, take, know, taking magic minerals. Why is this important? I, I put this stuff together almost 22, 20, as 20 years ago. Why? Because it made things simpler. So we sell it for $22 a, a month. Okay, it's not a ton of money. Not at all. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and if, and if you buy them three at a clip, it's 20 bucks even. It does not take a lot of money to get yourself moving in the right direction. True. All right. Stages of Life Medical Institute and what he's talking about, you can find at stagesoflifevitamins.com. This is Dr. David Klein in the house here. We do this every Sunday from 4 until 5. It is a call-in show, and Bill is on the line from Orlando. He wants to talk about calcification of the aortic valve, <clears throat> the mitral valve, and he is 83 years old. What's Bip up, Bill? How you doing today? Hey, Bill. All right, pretty good. All right, what's your question there, Bill? Yes, uh, I've got uh, yes, I've got a a a aortic valve uh, stenosis. Got it. The um the, the aortic valve is um the area is about one point three centimeters squared. Okay. Moderate aortic aortic stenosis. And um, and uh, my question would be: I have also mitral valve calcification mitral and annulus okay so yeah, all right so yeah this is it's and it, what what do the arteries look like in your heart are they also uh, calcified no they are they they seem to be uh, clear okay cool all right so what's your question my question is with the with the stenosis uh, is that also calcification is something could be reversible if I can get the calcium down it's hard you can get you can get your your serum calcium to be within normal range it's not going to make any difference with with regards to the calcification in the valve leaflets or in the, in the, the uh, structures that support it the reason why it calcified to begin with is the key here. It wasn't simply cholesterol building up like carbon on your valves in your car. It doesn't work that way at all. The calcium gets deposited in the same way that your body builds up a wart. 
there's an inf uh, inflammation, the body starts to wall it off with calcium. So somewhere along the line, you ended up with intravascular calcification. So what you need to be looking at in terms of just um, your hemodynamics, you know, getting your, your, your heart, um, the ultrasounds periodically so you can see what the flows look like, that's going to be important. Reversing the inflammation may help. So you look at something called homocysteine. That's spelled H-O-M-O-C-Y-S-T-E-I-N-E. -E. Homocysteine levels, when they go up, tend to imply that you have vascular inflammation. CRP, that's C-reactive protein, same thing, different cascade. You need to follow that as well. The third one is called interleukin-6 or IL-6. So the trick is to look at those three blood parameters, start lowering them, and when you can get the inflammation under control, much of the problem will start to ease up. Now, at the age of 83, do I think you have time, basically, to get it back to the way it was when you're 60? The answer is probably not. But that's not really the question. The real question is, is what can you do to keep the problem from getting worse and maybe get a little bit of additional function out of it? What I would be doing immediately, okay, would be taking a good, healthy dosage of a good fish oil. And that doesn't mean the prescription Vasipa or these others. It means simply getting a good fish oil, something with adequate EPA and DHA in it. EPA, the most important portion, is an anti-inflammatory omega-3 fatty acid. The dosage that you're looking for there is about 1,000 milligrams twice a day. That's not the capsule size. That's the amount of EPA. What else do you want to be taking? High-dose folic acid will lower your cholesterol. It will lower the calcification as well. These are two things I've been doing for almost 30 years. Works beautifully, by the way. What else do you want to be doing? A simple aspirin, a baby aspirin a day. You wouldn't think that would make a big difference, but it most certainly does. Wow. Yeah. So this is pretty much where you are with it. Um, so, you know, at 83, I don't think that we're going to be looking at those things reversing, but I've got plenty of people that have come in with carotid, st carotid stenosis, 60, 80% carotid stenosis Oof. that come back and we redo the ultrasounds and they're clear. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, it's just, a, you know, the valves, valves might be a little bit more difficult because every time your heart beats, they take a beat. You know? Wow. So they get a little inflamed just by themselves. Okay. Oh, here's a good text. Does Biden have dementia in your medical opinion? I, I would say probably. Yeah. Probably. I mean, he certainly does. He does demonstrate with regards to his inability to focus and his memory issue. Yeah. Wow. You got questions for the doc? Phone is open at 407-422-1212. I am Melissa Fox, co-hosting with Dr. David Klein. Any products mentioned today can be found at stagesoflifevitamins.com. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back. It is Stages of Life Radio on News Radio WFLA, Orlando. Okay, yeah, you're doing good with that one. Yeah, so you, you, have, you have one up there on the text that say, that mentions OCPD. I know. Oh, that's, I Orlando, that's, that's Orange County Police Department, where yeah, I come from. Yeah, yeah I, think, I feel that too, yeah. Yeah, the abbreviation. I, I think it's COPD, but what is the gasofenin that he's talking about? Boy, Fennison. All right, so yeah, the, the question. Right. Okay, so that's for on the radio, but you can answer it now if you want. Herbert's checking in from China. He, on the web, uh, internet, he wants to know if he can ask you a question about something not related to the minerals. Okay, fair enough. Sure, go ahead. Herbert, what you got? Text it in there, or type it in there if you want. Let's see. We had a bunch of people watching. Uh, I'll try not to answer it in Mandarin. Ha, ha, ha. He's sorry about that one. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, if he's not, he will be. Yes, so, yeah. I will be beaten. I will be beaten you know, by, by our own uh, 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 party here. We haven't mentioned <laughs> it as of yet, but uh, there's still the fast, uh, the high-speed te high COVID testing hotline. Which you can call the COVID hotline at 4076 36 3945 if you need testing. And, and if you need it fast. And yeah. more importantly, if you'd like it done accurately. Accuracy. If you, is want, good, yeah. Yeah, if you want to know how you're doing and not the person that was ahead of you in line at the convention center, okay, just saying. Yeah, if you're traveling, you need to know what's going on. If you have to see sick relatives, you really don't want to be getting yourself confused with somebody else because some organization took a shortcut with regards mm. to labeling the samples which is a big okay problem. here we go very low fsh and lh along with low testosterone suggestions uh, and you get about 30 seconds for a the couple yeah, there are a couple ways you can do that you can take something called hcg injections they can be done five out of seven days that will kick up your your uh, testosterone it's a pain to have to do this the wow. easiest way to do it is to forget the fsh and lh which are probably suppressed because of im testosterone that you took in the past which we haven't heard about and so then you go transdermally with the testosterone. You try seconds. to emulate 
what the body does in terms of day-to-day -day rhythm, and you can bring it up. So I prefer transdermal testosterone because it's A, inexpensive, B, easy to do, and C, doesn't cause collateral damage like your FSH and LH. Very nice. Welcome back to Stages of Life Radio. How are you? It's us. Yeah, we're back here. There we go. I don't know what the heck that was. Hey, lady. Gotta wait your job. turn. Wait your turn, lady. Oh, yeah. 407-422-1212. I think we got someone already uh, checking in on that. And we have a bunch of texts that we're going to address. Yes, you took care of the Biden one right out of the gate. How does uh, how does Biden look so spry though, um, like he did at the town hall? They pump him full of vitamins. No, I, I, and stuff? I know what I would do. What would you do? I would give Madderall. Oh. That's how I would do. Okay. All right now. All right. You know, I mean, I, I, I used to be on vice presidential detail. I know so that. I, I, I took care of these sorts of people before. It's very easy to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, that, there's a very easy. I was gonna say it's very easy to pump them up. Yeah, just do a urine tox. That's uh, easy. We could figure it out very quickly. Well, yeah, it could be. All right, we got here. Um, Anne from Sereno wants to talk about lichen sclerosis. Lichen, lichen sclerosis. sclerosis. Yes. She's around 70 years old. You want to go ahead and take that call? Sure. Uh, Hi, Anne. Turn your radio down, sweetheart. That's good. There we go. <laughs> Hey, Ma'am, how are you doing today? <laughs> doing great. What's up? All right, what's your question, sweetheart? I'd I'd like to know what treatment is there for lichen sclerosis. Okay. Uh, now the question you have there pertains to lichen sclerosis of the vagina, correct? Yes. Okay. So what happens is as you get older, your estrogen level declines. Yours is probably close to zero. Your progesterone level is probably the same. Testosterone, oddly and coincidentally, would be the same. The tissues in the vagina become atrophic. That means they tend to wither away or thin out. And then you end up with this. It's like a skin disease. It's a skin condition. In fact, the lining of your vagina is very much like the lining of your mouth, which is a type of skin. If the tissue in there doesn't have adequate lubrication or adequate stimulation in terms of the hormones, you'll develop these conditions. And typically what I do is I measure the blood hormone levels and then start to replace them to the point where you would have been when you're 50 to 55 years of age. Get you just enough estrogen to get the job done, just enough progesterone to keep it lubricated, and just enough testosterone to keep you from developing osteopenia or osteoporosis, which I'd be willing to bet you also have. But in the meantime, okay, the fast way, and all you're interested in right now is the fast way to do this, I would be using estriol vaginal cream along with something called vaginal hyaluronic acid. These two creams can be inserted down below there. You do it on a daily basis, and it will stimulate things to start getting lubricated. But in the longer, uh, the longer play here is to restore the hormonal levels back to what they should have been, or at least halfway to where they should have been, were you 20 years younger? And that was, uh, you know, that would be the way I would do it. And in fact, that's how I do. Yeah, I was going to say, you might want to, exactly might want to, and just go ahead and uh, try Make and an get appointment, a, an appointment. That's, yeah, that's, that's the sweet spot for what yeah, I do. You should write this down, 407-679-3337. Uh, you'll talk with Iris, and if you can get through Iris, I'll tell you what, you will be on the road to <laughs> <Okay>. recovery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Iris is a sweetheart. She really is, but she's also the, she's the, bulldog. the, the, the gate door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gate. she protects me. She's, she's the guardian at the she gate. She's my pit bull. She Anne's is my... line is open, 407-422-1212. Uh, going to the text line, we have a couple of... Uh, I had polio as an infant. All right. Suffer from PPS, constipation. Post polio syndrome. Right. Muscle joint pain, weakness, shortness of breath, and all that. Any recommendations for treating or dealing with the PPS? The answer is yeah. Okay. I've had many patients over the year with post polio syndrome, and typically they come in with joint pain. And it almost always turns out to be a muscular dystocia, which is what they have to begin with, and it pinches a nerve. Oh. When you're suffering from these sorts of systemic and const what they call constitutional complaints, it's going to be something else other than the polio. So you're receiving levoxyl, levothyroxine, and atorvastatin. If you have hypothyroidism, you'll get all of the above complaints if it's being inadequately treated. And wouldn't you know it, I can make anybody complain of those things by giving them statins. Oh, gosh. So my bet, okay, is that this is going to be iatrogenic. That's, that's, a, that's a doctor word for doctor-caused uh -oh. So you need to be screened for autoimmune thyroid disease. That's uh, You do the T3, T4, TSH, 
but also a TPA and an ATG. Those are autoimmune titers. Those are a lot of initials. Yeah. And then when you're looking at the atorvastatin, you need to look at your cortisol level because atorvastatin will knock down your estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, DHEA, pregnenolone, mm. and something that is called cortisol, all of which will cause these same symptoms. And you could treat this? I do it all the time. This oh. is this you know I, this is, I live for this. Okay, stages of life medical institute.com. That'll get you that's what we call the splash page and you can get there, you can get yourself uh, pre-screened and all kinds of wonderful stuff but Check basically the blood work out. I would I would say you need to, you know, come come on by and, and get this done by somebody who knows what's going on. Um, get to it quickly. You only yeah. have so much time in your life. You know, let's enjoy your life for yeah. crying out loud. Uh, here's another one that uh, asks you about, you say something about COPD all the time, um, and they can't remember what the, the uh, medication was. Okay, there are two. Okay, you know, they, when you said OCPD, it's, uh, that's or, or, you know, Orange County Police Department. I don't know what to tell you about them. <laughs> but COPD, guaifenesin, it's generic mucinex. So if you look up mucinex, guaifenesin, G-U-A-I-F-E-N-E-S-I-N. Guaifenesin generic is what you're looking for. We have it in the office, 100 tablets, I think, are $9 or $8. Very, very inexpensive. The only other place you want to go for that is Costco because any if you go to the regular drugstore, they're going to kill you on this stuff. It's too expensive there. It should, it should be cheap. The second thing is called N-acetylcysteine or NAC. What these two things do together, and you take a capsule of one, that's the NAC, and a tablet of the guaifenesin, you do that three to four times a day, it thins out the secretions in your lungs, thins out the secretions in your sinuses. If you have a prostate, it'll thin them there, thin them there too, and you're able to cough these things out and breathe better. Yeah, does it work? It does. I take both because I have asthma. Yeah, I got to start doing that, Doc. It works. Another it's one, great uh, stuff. we have a question here about hair loss. Otherwise healthy 62 year old female on estradiol and progestin. Progestin is your problem. Progestin is an anti progesterone. It's the same thing as you see with birth control pills. So, of all of the hormones to take, that's probably the least friendly thing that you're doing. So, what do I do? I use progesterone, okay, not progestin, because you're not looking to take something that's not bioidentical. When you have too low of a progesterone, your body will start having difficulties with thyroid and you become functionally hypothyroid and then the hair will start to fall out and thin. It's kind of a problem. So what do you do? Real easy. Progesterone, the dosage is typically between 100 and 200 milligrams transdermally per day. I don't like using it orally because when you do it hits the stomach, goes to the liver and kicks up another protein called SHBG not going to bore you with the details, but once that thing starts to crank up, it is a bummer because it makes it very, very difficult to treat the, the patient. Mm. The capsules, oddly enough, are far more expensive than the creams. So for $90, $100, $110 a month, you get the progesterone capsules, or for 28 bucks a month, you get the cream that we have. Um, I think that it's the, the economics don't make sense as well as the medicine. Okay, here's an interesting one. What's your opinion of sonic or shockwave therapy for erectile for dysfunction? It, it's a big deal right now. There are people out there that are doing lots of it. I've not had anybody that's gone through it that really thought much of it. Okay. You know, there are no guarantees to it that are attached in medicine. They're not, you're not allowed to act actually ethically. If a doctor tells you that we're going to guarantee this and guarantee no, that, no, no. You, they can actually get into trouble, as it turns that's out. That's not true. That's so what do I think about it? The jury is out so far as I'm concerned. I wouldn't do it. It's expensive. It does not hurt. It doesn't do any damage. But I'm not so sure that I want uh, somebody waving an ultrasound wad over you know, the area involved. How can I find a good doctor to treat hypothyroidism? Good question, bad answer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that this, 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 this is tough. I would be looking at a, 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 a group called the Institute for Functional Medicine, or IFM, uh, AAMG. These are what are called anti-aging medicine groups, mm -hmm. and then try to find somebody near you, and then pray. Stages of Life <laughs> Medical Institute.com. Check out Dr. David Klein. We'll be back again next Sunday at 4. Again, any medications or nutraceuticals reference can be find at, found at Stages of Life vitamins.com. Say goodbye. You've been listening Adios. to Stages of Life Radio with Dr. David Klein. Check out stagesoflifemedicalinstitute.com or stop by 1917 Booth Circle in Longwood near the intersection of I-4 and 434. Call 407-679-3337. That's 407-679-3337. Dr. Klein accepts most insurance and Medicare too. Join us next Sunday at 4 p.m. on News Radio WFLA Orlando.